Thank you for joining me today on Culture Keys. Get set, get ready, let's grow. And here we go. Welcome into Culture Keys this morning. I have been having an absolute blast teaching this leadership series on leading in the way of the master out of Matthew chapter 20, verses 20 through 28. I pray that you're growing. I pray that uh, you are learning and uh, being stretched in your leadership. And uh, there's some principles that we've sort of extracted out of this exchange between Jesus and the mother of Zebedee's two sons. As she came, she asked, can these boys uh, sit at your right and your left hand in your kingdom? And this exchange, I believe, has really pointed out some key principles. And we've walked through several of them. Firstly, that leadership is a call. Secondly, that leadership is a prepared position. Thirdly, that leadership comes at a price. And then last week, we sort of just scratch around in the fourth principle, and that is this, that God is pleased when His people desire leadership. I don't think desiring that place of leadership is a bad thing. It's just that we have to understand the path of how to arrive at that place of great leadership. And I believe I left off last week with a question. Do we want to be great in the kingdom or do we want to be great for the kingdom? Because I think that desire really touches at the heart of our motivation for leadership. I don't think we should want to be great in the kingdom, but I think we ought to earnestly desire to be great for the kingdom. And I believe that God is pleased when his people desire leadership. And let me start right here today. God made us for specific things. We weren't made for everything, but each of us were made for something. And how many people go through life without ever finding their something? That thing that just turns them on, that excites them, that motivates them, that inspires them, that they're passionate about. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, Paul teaches, we are God's handiwork. Listen to this scripture. This is so powerful. We are God's handiwork, created in Christ to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This is a scripture that has a lot to unpack. But let me take you through just a few things that I pull out of Ephesians 2.10. The first is this. Each of us are the product of God. He made us as we are, and we, each of us, are beautifully and wonderfully made. And we're perfect, listen to this, for the time and the place where we are. I want you to take solace, confidence in knowing that you are perfect for the time and the place where God has called you. Don't, don't spin your life and spin your wheels wishing that you were made like someone else or that you had someone else's gifts and abilities. Paul said, each of us are God's handiwork. You, you need to take joy in that, peace in that, comfort in that, and not spend your life wishing you were like someone else or had someone else's abilities. Take comfort in knowing you are the product of God and that you were made for such a time and such a place as this, where you are called and where you are serving. So we're each of us the product of God. Secondly, each of us are created by God for a specific work. God made you to do something. God made you to do something. And finding that divine assignment or what we might call the will of God for our life and giving ourselves to that in lifelong commitment is really the only thing that is going to bring true fulfillment in our lives. And I say this uh, oftentimes in our church, there's a difference between fulfillment and a life filled full. A lot of us have a life filled full, but we're not fulfilled because the place of fulfillment is the place of your calling and doing the work, the specific work that God has called each of us to do. We were created in Christ to do good works, a specific work for God. And thirdly, not only did God prepare us for a specific work, I love this, He prepared a specific work for you. 
Paul said we were created in Christ to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So God not only prepares a people for the promise, God prepares the promise for a people. When you read the the narrative of the children of Israel and Joshua going into the promised land, there's a unique verse there that says, the Jordan overflowed its banks all season of harvest. The indication is that when the children of Israel went into the promised land, there was already a harvest standing in the field. So God took 40 years to prepare a people for the promise. But watch this. While he was preparing a people for the promise, he was preparing the promise for a people. The harvest they would need to sustain them in their conquest of the land of Canaan. That harvest was already standing in the field and they didn't sow a seed. They didn't water a seed. They didn't break up the fallow ground. It was already there because God not only prepares a people for the promise, he prepares the promise for a people. I believe that God didn't just prepare me for Louisville, Kentucky. God prepared Louisville, Kentucky for me. And I believe that God has prepared something specific for you to do. And he's he's prepared that something for you to do for you in Jesus' name. So we've talked about leadership being a call, leadership being a prepared position, leadership coming at a price, and that God is pleased when his people desire leadership. Next, I love this. Leadership is not for your benefit, but for the benefit of others. In verse number 28 of Matthew 20, Jesus said, Even the Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but to minister. This is at the very, very heart of spiritual leadership. You see, to serve is to seek the interests of the people that you're serving. This is one of the most difficult things about leadership, in my opinion, is because we are all in different seasons, self-seeking, meaning that we're out for our own interests, what benefits us the most. But leading in the way of the master means that we embody um, seeking the interests of others. Jesus said, "I, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve the purpose of others. I came to serve those to whom I've been called. And I think one of the things that we have to do over and over again in the checkpoints of our own leadership, and I would encourage you to have checkpoints in your leadership, check-ins with yourself, with your motivations, with your habits, with your disciplines, with your daily routines, have check-ins. And one of those ought to be, am I seeking my own interests in the way that I'm leading? Or am I seeking the interests of the people that God has called me to lead? You know, the goal of leadership is to discover how to contribute to the fulfillment of the full potential of each of those God has called you to lead. How do we contribute to seeing the absolute purpose and plan of God played out in their life? How do we serve that? You know, and I think, again, I I can't, I've come out of seasons where uh, uh, there are models of authority, where everything is there to serve the leader. And I think the the kind of leadership that I've uh, sought to model, not always successfully, certainly, and to teach here is the model of servant leadership, which means we lead by serving. And I believe that's the model that Jesus is talking about in Matthew 20. He's explaining that the way you are great in the kingdom, if you want to be first, be last. If you want to be great, be a servant. That the way to greatness is to learn how to contribute to the full potential of those you've been called to serve. And, And I think one of the checkpoints that I like to look at in my own life is, You know, are people better because they're connected to my leadership? Are are people growing? Are are they reaching their potential as leadership, as leaders, or in leadership because they're connected to what we do? 
And um, I, I think I think it's important that we ask ourselves: How are we contributing to the fulfillment of the potential of others? What are we doing on a daily, weekly, monthly basis that is really stretching and growing and inspiring those that God has called us to lead? What are the ways, right? When you look at your leadership, what ways are you stimulating growth in their lives? What are you bringing to the table uh, that, uh, as a seed that becomes a harvest in their potential? And I think as we look through those things, we're going to find that, you know, uh, we can always step it up in what we're offering uh, the people in our life. And uh, the other day I sat down and I was just thinking, okay, here's the ways that for the staff and for the leadership of this place that I am contributing to their potential. And so I looked at that pile, you know, the the podcast and the things that I do in teaching and training the staff in uh, the teaching, uh, certainly the Bible studies on Wednesday night, and maybe the the preaching on Sunday morning. And what, what are the ways? What are the ways? And I thought to myself, Man, I believe I could do so much more to stimulate growth in the lives of the people that are serving at the Kingdom Center. And I begin to put some ideas on paper of ways that I could that I could be a, a better contributor to their overall growth. I want you to think about that. How are you contributing to the fulfillment of the full potential of those that God has called you to lead? We're going to take it up again right here next week on Culture Keys.